Hey guys, Thermal here. Hope you're having a good day or night. We are now in week two of Shadowlands and I am really surprised with everyone's engagement uh, lately on my channel. Thank you to everyone who has subscribed. Thank you all for your comments. I'm making this video now in response to some comments asking um, from people what to do in week two. So I'm just going to be going over the list of things that I've done this week. Uh, first being getting your renown level to level six is the cap for week two and what that provides so now I've unlocked Claire as a um, I don't even know what they're called second is it aspirant um, but yeah there's a second pathway I can now choose because I've gotten I think at renown five you get the option for that so that's the first thing you want to do this week is get to Renown 6, so that's all capped up. Uh, personally, I'm still going to stick with Pelagos because he's got that 350 mastery for 10 seconds when using Resonating Arrows, just a lot of extra damage. Um, the other thing would be doing your Mythic Zeros again this week. So I've just finished all my Mythic Zeros. You can check which ones you're locked to uh, here. So the next thing to do, I would say, is to cap your honor, so you can cap that to 15,000. And the reason why I say to do this is because some of your pieces you're not going to get in your mythics, you just get unlucky. This is a quick way to just boost up your item level, as well as next week when we hit Renown 7, we're going to be able to upgrade the, that PvP gear to a higher item level. It just puts you in a good spot. I'm going into the Mythic Keys next week. So for those who don't know where the PvP vendor is, it's in the Enclave in Ouroboros, just where I'm standing. You can also get the quest for the week. There's a weekly PvP quest. This week it is um, doing Epic Battlegrounds, so 1500 honor from that. I've done 646 of that, so I need to do a bit more Epic Battlegrounds. Um, but basically the system works as you buy items at rank one from here for a certain amount of honor. You then come talk to this guy, you drag in um, an honor piece like this one, for example. Uh, my next upgrade, because it's already rank three, my next upgrade is going to be renowned seven, which I'll be able to get next week. And then I can push that item level up higher. So you may just want to do that, uh, get a whole bunch of honor stacked up, ready to go. So then as soon as you hit renowned seven, um, you can just pump up your item level and get ready for either uh, whether you're doing the mythics, the raiding, um, as well as the PvP. So the other thing you should be doing is your dailies in the moor so then you can get your Stygia. This allows um, you to buy from Venari in the moor. So for example, this is one that I'm going to buy now while in Torghast your first death does not count against you and that is permanent so I'll buy that and show you how that sort of works. So using it, and now that's a permanent upgrade. Other upgrades that you can get later on when you get a higher rep is the so add a socket to a Shadowlands item that does not already have one, can be used on helms, necks, braces, belts, or rings. So this is going to be really good um, to increase your player power. So I would suggest just keep farming, keep doing your dailies each day. You don't have to put too much time into it. Um, but that's also another thing I do every day. The other thing you can now do in week two is make legendaries. So if you've done your Torghast for the week, which I've done the two layers uh, for layer three, then you should have enough soul ash to make a legendary. So you'll complete the quest at the rune carver, and then you'll get the option to create a legendary. Um, you need the 190 item level uh, whatever gear slot you're using for your legendary the legendary power that you want to create two uh, missives so whatever stats you want to put on so that could be haste versatility crit or mastery and then finally the 1250 soul ash at this uh, for the 190 item level in the future when we start getting into future weeks we're going to be able to upgrade that legendary um, for more soul ash so that's um sort of things to be thinking about in the next week so always just keep in mind that you want to be doing your tour guest each week as well 
I actually went with the shoulder pads of the Serpent Stalker as my legendary, and that um, basically when I aim shot, it also fires a Serpent Sting at the primary target. Um, and I'll show you some of my DPS with that and how much it's doing. Uh, still not 100% sure whether this is the best legendary. This is what um, like Wowhead is suggesting is the best legendary for PvE. One thing that um, you may have heard about is that pro players aren't crafting their legendaries yet. This is mainly due to a lot of people still testing legendaries, trying to figure out which ones are going to be best, as well as some people having fears that Blizzard's just going to drop a patch before the Mythics come out, um, completely nerfing some legendaries while buffing others, and then the one that they crafted may not be the best anymore, or they may need to change specs completely. Uh, so craft a legendary at your own risk. I just did it anyway. If it does get nerfed, then yeah, that's on me, but at the end of the day, what can you do? I'm now here at the Raiders training dummy. I just wanted to break down the sort of DPS Serpent Stalkers trickery is producing. I'm going to use a multi-dot aim shot sort of strategy on the three targets first. And then I'm just going to do a single target DPS rotation to see how much DPS it's going to offer uh, to give you guys a bit of an idea of whether this talent is worth it. And I'd also like to hear um, if you guys picked any different legendary powers for your legendaries. Uh, post what sort of DPS you're getting out of that because I I'm quite interested to know whether I've made the right choice and I'm sure other people are as well. Because um, I think in the future of this expansion we'll be able to make a second legendary and it would be good to know how the others are performing. I'll get that underway now. So I've just done my three target rotation for a minute. That's using multi-shot explosive shot volley, as well as changing targets with aim shot to multi-dot with serpent sting. And it's producing around 8.8% of my overall damage with an average DPS of 346. You can see I had 24% crits in that time, uh, which is actually higher than the expected crit I was going to get to, and in terms of that, my RNG was a bit lucky with that specific rotation, but um, also it wasn't a perfect rotation, so don't take this as, as the correct DPS. It would change depending on um, how efficient you are with your spells. But this is just a ballpark figure, so 350 DPS, three target rotation. Uh, that's multi-dotting between the three targets. So now I'm going to do a single target rotation for a minute and see how that performs in DPS. I've just finished my single target rotation and you can see Serpent Sting is making up about 7.6% of that damage coming in at a DPS of 200. There was 13.9% crits that time so a little bit less than what was expected based on my 16% crit. Um, so a little bit less on a little bit less lucky on the RNG on that one, but this just gives a ballpark figure. So say you're doing 3k on a boss fight, you might do 3.2k. So it's a substantially increase when you think about it that way. And also you need to consider that this dot persists for 18 seconds. So in some cases you may uh, the mechanic you may not be able to attack, but the dot is still ticking over, keeping that DPS going. Let me know what you think about this legendary whether you think some of the others are better and post your DPS numbers if you can like I'm, I'm really curious to be honest. The other thing I've been doing is leveling up my companions. Um, not sure how important this is going to be later on so I'm just getting on top of it now but you can see um, they give more anima for doing these quests so you may as well just send you guys on them get more anima as well as leveling them up in case there's actually something really crucial uh, from this that you will have them ready to go. The other thing I've been doing is anima dailies. So you can see these all over the map. Maldraxxus, Bastion, Ardenweald and Revendreth all have them. And the main reason I've been collecting these is so I can deposit them into my Sanctum Reservoir. You can see I've now got a transport network, anima conductor, command table as well as the path of ascension. Uh, which are all pretty cool. So that's pretty much it for this video. I do have some news. I will be starting a new job uh, for the next three months on a four day on, three day off roster. So 
Unfortunately, I won't have as much time as usual to create videos, but I am planning on uh, putting out one a week. Um, I have just really enjoyed making these videos. I obviously love playing WoW. I love talking about WoW. Um, so yeah, any questions you want to ask, if you have any recommendations about future videos that you'd like me to do, just um, leave a comment. If you want to talk about anything WoW related, anything Hunter related is what I play the most, uh, leave a comment as well. Um, also, if you enjoyed the video, give it a like. I've been a bit shocked with how many people have been supporting the channel. I really appreciate it. It motivates me to make more videos and I'm glad to see more people learning from my videos, getting something out of it. I really enjoy being able to reply to your comments, see what you guys are up to as well. I think I've really just enjoyed the community aspect uh, side of things with this YouTube channel. Uh, it's been really great connecting to people all across the world. Uh, so thanks again for that and um, enjoy the rest of your day or night and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.